When it comes to us older lifters, there's really only two things that separates us from the younger lifters. One is we've had more time to develop chronic injuries that can hamper our training, and two, as a whole, we require a bit more time for recovery. We're going to keep these two points in mind as we go through our discussion today on muscle growth and the best number of reps that we should be doing in order to maximize our potential muscle size. Traditionally, rep ranges are broken into three groups. One to five reps for strength. Next is what they call the hypertrophy or muscle growth group with a range of six to 12 reps. And it's this group that is in question. I used an article by Greg Knuckles as a reference in which he reviewed all of the current studies on these rep ranges with regards to muscle hypertrophy. And in it, he extends the size of this middle group to 15 reps, leaving the final group of 15 to 20 or more reps for developing muscular endurance. In order for these groups to be compared equally, you need to have equal intensity, which you'd accomplish by training very close to failure. The reason there's even a question as to what is the best rep range to build muscle is that it's hard to quantify. Building muscular endurance and strength are performance goals and are easy to measure based on results. Muscle size, on the other hand, is a more visual goal. Sure, it can be measured by DEXA scan or an MRI, but those options aren't always readily available and not as straightforward as hitting a new one rep max. When you look at all the studies done on rep ranges, what you end up finding is that when it comes to muscle growth, as long as you equate volume and intensity, the rep range doesn't really matter much. But that isn't the end of the story. Really, it is just the beginning. There are a lot of practical applications we need to look at when deciding which rep range is the right one we should be working in, including our ability to recover, muscle fiber type, and our tendency for sore joints or old injuries that we might have. There are advantages and flaws to each rep range. And because I've always had a tendency to lean more toward high rep training, let's start there. The biggest advantage to high rep training is that you're using lighter weight, reducing the risk of injury, and making it easier to perform your reps with good form. This is how I start out most of my clients, with slightly higher reps, to give them time to get used to the movements and perfect their form. But to every advantage, there is a disadvantage. And one of the biggest disadvantages to high rep training is that you can become aerobically fatigued before you fully fatigue all of our different muscle fibers. Your muscles will start to get sore and it gets hard to complete the reps. You think you're finished, but if you dig deep, oftentimes you'll be surprised by how many more reps you can do. And in order for these three groups to be viewed evenly, you must be able to train closer to muscular failure. One last advantage to having good muscular endurance is that sometimes it's that endurance that helps you to push through to the last rep when training heavier. Next, we have the one to five rep range. One of the biggest advantages when it comes to lower rep training is we're always working with a heavy enough load to create enough mechanical tension resulting in muscle growth. But muscle growth doesn't just come from heavy weights. It needs to be equated with volume, as volume is the major driver of hypertrophy. And for many, their central nervous systems start to fatigue before they have gotten in enough volume to truly maximize hypertrophy. Heavy rep training also tends to be hard on our joints, especially if we have a long-term injury we are dealing with. Now, one of the last advantages to heavy, low rep training is it gets us used to moving heavy weight and how that weight feels which helps us to get past any mental block that we may have thinking that we can't lift that heavy. But we need to use extra discipline to make sure we're using good form and a full range of motion. So this kind of puts the 6 to 15 reps at the top of the list as the best blend between the other two. But there's one more consideration. Predominant muscle fiber type. Fast twitch muscle fibers tend to respond better to low heavy weight training whereas slow twitch fibers tend to respond better to higher rep training. Now, most of us have a fairly even mix of muscle fiber types overall, and will benefit from mixing up our rep ranges. One way we can do this is through concurrent periodization. And for us older guys, this will also give us more recovery time from the heavy low rep training to spare our joints, and it increases our overall weekly training volume. If you're full body training, then what you would do 
is you'd have one day a week as your heavy day. Your second training day would be your medium rep day. And your final and third training day would be high rep. What I do with my clients and myself is I break up the rep ranges a little differently. With 5 to 10 reps being my low rep phase, 10 to 15 reps the middle, and 15 to 20 being the high rep block. 1 to 5 reps might be traditionally considered the strength training rep range, but as long as you're applying progressive overload to each of these rep ranges, you're going to get stronger, build more muscle, and protect our joints. That way we can keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.